record. I am recording now. So we have this for you. Yes, that's the answer. All of these sessions are going to be recorded by the time it goes to the cloud and we get them downloaded and shipped to the website. Wait till next week till you see them. But we will send you an email that will contain your uh, it will contain your uh, your certificate of attendance. That's what we're going to have for you. It'll have a survey evaluation. It'll have links. It'll have all sorts of stuff but also the links to these videos. So we're there, but we're really excited that you're here. Um, for those of you that were in New York, you know that we all had our own buckets of milk. That's what my staff had this morning. We had buckets of milk, but uh, we've been doing this for a while, it seems. So I'm switching to another uh, another product made from Illinois corn. Um, so we're, we're gonna have that keep us going. With that, we are so excited to go to our next presenter. Our next presenter is a good friend of mine, I'm happy to say this, Julia Recco with the American Farm Bureau Foundation for Agriculture. For the past 13 years, she's been working to create accurate and engaging resources about food and farming. She has her master's degree in secondary education from George Mason University, and she is the driving force behind Feeding Minds Press. And we heard Peggy Thomas uh, talking earlier today about her new book, A Hero for the Hungry, about Norman Borlaug, and that is coming up soon. Julia, before, are you going to talk about that a little later? I don't want to steer your thunder. Oh, you know, I'm just going to mention it in passing later. So if you want to say something about it. I do. I want to say something phenomenal about it. Peggy Thomas, another wonderful book by Peggy Thomas, available September 1st. You can pre-order now at feedingmindspress.com. Feedingmindspress.com. You can go there and, and learn a little bit more about that. You can learn a little bit more about that. But Julia's been pretty busy today, too. Not only has she been taking... Uh, touching base on this, the American Farm Bureau is also using today as a uh, professional development opportunity, working with Google. Uh, Google and the American Farm Bureau partnered up to bring uh, resources using the Google platform to rural America. Julia, you want to fill in a few more details? I can't wait to watch it, uh, uh, watch sure. it later, but how people Thank can also you. register. Good job. Sure, yes. So um, first of all, the Google session um, is being recorded as well. Um, it's best for educators in um, secondary education, um, middle school and high school. It goes over tools that Google offers, um, two different tools, um, Google partnerships that has workshops available for the teachers can download and use in their classrooms. The one example they gave was how to create a good resume. So that could be really good for, you know, folks um, in high school. Um, and the other part of the, uh, presentation is about um, applied digital skills, which are, it's a really fun um, resource that Google has that it's lesson plans that use um, Google products, although you could also use Office products actually too. <laughs> Don't tell them I said that. Um, to, to complete the task. So you're having your kids learn how to use Google Slides by having them create an if-then story in slides. So it shows you all of those pre-made lesson plans. They're all made by um, educators. Um, a lot of those have been um, certified. So um, it, it goes over how to use those different resources in your classroom. And also folks who participate in the sessions, even if you watch the recorded sessions, can apply to become uh, um, a Farm Bureau Foundation uh, fellow. And there are four fellowships available. Um, they're going to get $25,000 stipends and they'll be working with educators from Google um, over eight months. It's about two to four hours a week. We, we know that, that these are teachers um, to develop new agriculture-based resources that are gonna be going on the applied digital skills platform so that everyone can have access to these agricultural um, lessons. So it's really exciting. Those applications are open and on the uh, website. And that's right. And folks, if you found the information about this, you're going to be able to find how to link into that uh, in, into those uh, Google presentations from the American Farm Bureau Foundation. Google American Farm Bureau Foundation. <laughs> that's the little cue there if you Google it. And uh, you'll see it. There's a link there. Plus, also on the social media of just about every Ag and Classroom program in the nation, they've been talking about it in the last couple of weeks. But we're really excited. Julia's got a great presentation, a very good way to learn. So we're going to talk about a very good way to learn. And Julia, I'm going to turn it over to you. I'll monitor the Q&A, folks. If you have questions, drop them in the Q&A, and we'll be happy to pass those on to Julia. Julia, the floor is yours. Okay, great. Well, thank you for that wonderful introduction, um, Kevin. Um, today, 
we are going to be talking about um, fun ideas to incorporate lessons um, in your classroom about strawberries. And of course, um, one of the best ways to do this is to read a book about strawberries and then to do these lessons. And um, we're gonna, oops, sorry, we're gonna go to the next slide. Um, hang on one second. I, th I think I shared the wrong, stop share. I'm so sorry, I shared the wrong um, version of this presentation. There you go, I was gonna say, you're not <laughs> advancing, but. Or, oh, okay, hang on one second. Let's see. I have one that says meet Shannon and that's wrong. All right, well, while I figure that out, let me just um, pull up this so we can start with this. Um, this, part, this um, these lessons can be used with any book about strawberries that you have, but as uh, Kevin said, um, we're a little bit biased because we have a book about strawberries from the American Farm Bureau Foundation for Agriculture, and it's called I Love Strawberries. And um, during the live session of this, we had Shannon Anderson with us, and she's just a doll, and she reads this book so well. So I thought we could actually start off this session. Shannon actually recorded reading this book. Um, so I was hoping I could play it for you guys. Um, hopefully, we, we tested the, the sound, so hopefully it comes out. Turn it on to 100 um, so you can hear her. And we're going to start with um, reading the book, I Love Strawberries from um, the foundation, the uh, Feeding Minds Press from the foundation. And it's Hey, Julia, we can't hear. I'm sorry. I think I think there's just too many people on the stream. We just can't hear her. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. I actually have a backup plan. I have a backup plan. I will read you the book. Can you see this? I'm I'm muted, but yes, we can see it now. We're good. Okay, great, great. I do not have the charisma of Shannon Anderson, but I do want to read you the book. So um, this is how the book starts. The book is told in diary entries and through dialogue. So it starts with April 5th. I love strawberries. I love them so much I could eat them every day. Mom, can I grow strawberries of my very own? That's a lot of work, Jolie. Maybe when you're older. Mission one, look older. Wish me luck. Mission, oh. Looking older isn't the same as being older, Jolie. Mission update, failed. I need a new plan to prove I can handle growing strawberries. April 10th, act older. I need to act like an old person. I'm going to act like mom and dad. They're always making food and cleaning the house. So I'm gonna feed Munchie and clean his cage all by myself. Great job with Munchie, keep it up. Mission 12, uh, uh, April 12th, mission update. So far, so good. I'm going to find something else to take care of. April 13, mission three, grow something. I heard people who are good at taking care of plants have green thumbs. If I wanna grow strawberries, I better be prepared. I planted some grass seeds in a cup of soil. That's the only kind of seeds I could find. I hope they grow. Best grass ever, I hope. Grow, grow, grow. Needs watering and sunshine. Hello, dark soil. Mission update. Mom said I had to quit riding on myself, but she didn't say I couldn't keep taking care of my grass seeds though. Mission four, keep grass alive. I just watered my grass seeds. 
I'm keeping them in a window. I'm keeping them in my window so they get lots of sun. Mission update. It's alive. Yay. Little baby sprouts. I showed my grass to Munchie. He tried to eat it, so I think that's a good sign. Mom and dad are even impressed. Your grass keeps growing. You'll, if your grass keeps growing, you'll have to keep, start mowing. Old people are funny. Mission five, grass equals good, but berries equal better. We're going to the garden store to get pansies. Can we get some strawberry plants too? Sorry, Joe, I don't have cash for strawberry plants today. Mission update, sad poem. Strawberries are red, I am blue. I want them so bad, I don't know what to do. And this is a good place to point out really quickly, up in the uh, corner of her diary here, she has the word for strawberry in Italian. And the illustrator of this book hid the word for strawberry um, in like nine different languages throughout the book. So that's really something fun to look for. Mission six, make money. I want to show mom how old I can be. I did all the watering, that way mom could rest. Old people need rest, right? When I was in the yard, I noticed the Franklins were having a yard garage sale. Wait a minute, that's it, gotta go. Hey mom, can I set up a lemonade stand? Mission update, success. I sold lemonade for three whole hours yesterday. I made $6. I only sold two cups, one to Mrs. Franklin and one to grandpa, but grandpa gave me a whole $5 and said, keep the change. That's a big tip. I'm sure I've got enough money to buy strawberry plants now. Mission seven, go shopping. Dad and I looked up how much strawberry plants cost. You're not going to believe this. They're $12 each. I don't even have enough for one plant. I don't even know a spot where they where we'd put them, Joe. Mission update, no shopping today. Mission eight, find a good spot to plant plants. Can we plant strawberries here this year instead of flowers? Mom and dad have been talking in low voices for like a hundred minutes. What's so special about this spot? Mission update, question mark. Mission nine, hope. Joe Lee, you've been helping a lot and showing that you want to be responsible. We can try planting strawberries if you take care of them and harvest them all by yourself. Yes, thank you. I'll be the best planter and picker you ever saw. Mission accomplished, the very best day ever. The clock moved so slowly today, but after school, I got to go to the garden store. Mom and dad added money to the $6 I made selling lemonade. And guess what? We bought 12 strawberry plants. That's a dozen. Planting plants is dirty work, but I know it will be worth it. The plants are so cute with their little white flowers. I can't wait to harvest them. I have to grow them first though, cute. Harvest means to pick the strawberries when they are ready. Breaking news, tiny green strawberries are starting to grow. Strawberry update, bird attack, going into high alert. I'm watching you strawberry stealers. May 19, ladybugs eat the little bugs that eat strawberries. I love ladybugs. Also, I picked, no, I harvested for the first time today. My strawberries are so good. My first ripe ones, one for you and one for me. Thanks, Joe. Looks like you've got some friends helping you farm too. May 25th. I had enough strawberries today to fill a whole cup. Did you know strawberries have their seeds on the outside? Seeds right here, so juicy. May 29th, way more strawberries today. If this keeps happening, maybe I can make pie, yum. Looks like you have enough for 10 pies, Joe. Guess what we had for breakfast? Strawberry pancakes. It's a good thing school's out because my strawberries are going bonkers. I have to pick them every day. Let's freeze them so they don't spoil. We can have strawberries all winter. Yum. Munchie, don't tell mom and dad, but I'm so glad it's raining. I don't have to pick strawberries today. Phew. My berries love the rain. Either that or I must be the best strawberry farmer ever. There's a bazillion of them. Did you know that parts of strawberry plants grow long enough to bend down and plant themselves to make more plants? I didn't either. Bonus plant, runners. Pick your own. Please come pick your own, only $2 to fill a bag. I could kiss my brain today. I had an amazing idea. I made $8 and I didn't have to pick any strawberries. Pure genius. Joe, there aren't enough berries left to have a stand today. I think the patch is getting tired. I know I am. 
I may have to let the birds eat the rest. Best day ever. We went to the blueberry farm. I love blueberries. I love them so much. I could eat them every day. I'm delicious. Me too, mom. <laughs> so you can kind of see there what might happen next. Jolie got very excited about her um, strawberry plants. So um, let's see. Let's see, I want to share my PowerPoint. Okay, share. Can you see my PowerPoint now? I hope. Let's see. Let's get over here. So now that we've read the strawberry book, I hope you loved it. But I do want you to know that the lessons we're going to go over. Um, in the rest of this presentation can be used with any strawberry book, um, any strawberry book that you can find or have. It's just really fun. Strawberries, I think, are one of those fruits that have wide appeal with a lot of students. Um, so it's a very friendly fruit, as we say. So the, one of the first lessons I wanted to introduce you guys to um, is from um, the lesson plan that we have that goes with I Love Strawberries. Um, and while you do have to purchase it, I, um, I have it available for everybody who's here. Um, I can drop a link in uh, the Q&A um, right after this is over. Um, so you can, I will send it to you. I will send you all these um, lessons that I have available. And um, even if you don't do this specific lesson, it's just a fun idea to kind of incorporate um, a different way to get math um, into your classroom. And so this activity uses um, word problems, um, but it assigns roles, acting roles to different kids. So there are four different characters. There's John and um, Isaac and Jada, and um, each person plays a different character and they each take turns with the basket and the strawberries. In this lesson, we have strawberries that you can cut out. But when, when, when I did this in New York, I did it with strawberry candies, you know, those like hard strawberry candies with like the juice in the middle, very popular. Um, and so that could be fun too, um, if you're okay with handing out um, <laughs> candy to your classroom. And so what the kids do is, for example, one of them says, Jada picks 17 strawberries, then gives eight to her friend Anne, how many strawberries does Jada have left? So whoever's playing Jada would of course count out 18 strawberries into her basket and then Anne would, or she would count out um, like seven. And so that they can kind of, use this manipulation to see, kind of do act out the math problem. And so that's um, just kind of a different way to um, do a math problem. The next lesson we're gonna talk about is a vocab race. Again, this specific worksheet is available on um, through the educator guide, but um, I have a link here and I'll drop it in the chat. Um, it's just a little form you can fill out um, where you give me your email and I will send you this. Um, worksheet or I can send it to you Kevin we'll figure it out there's a way we will get you this stuff <laughs> and so um this is a different way of looking at vocabulary and it can be really fun it's a game where you've got the words on one side and the definitions you're going to cut them out and you scramble them up and then you give each group a dice a die and um it can be a race um or you can just have them take turns they roll the dice and if they get a one or a six, they get to pick one of the definitions out and put it next to the word it defines. And the first group to get all the words right um, wins. Now it's fun to play this as a race, of course, and definitely make sure that they get all the definitions right. But if you're trying to differentiate this lesson for certain learners, or um, if you think that the race part of it will cause stress to certain learners, obviously don't do that. Um, but yep, just a different way to kind of do uh, mix up vocabulary in your classroom. You can do this with any kind of vocabulary, um, but all about strawberries is what we're talking about today, of course. And then I don't know if you noticed while we were reading the book, but specifically in the book, I Love Strawberries, there is a lot of figurative language being used. Um, so it is a perfect way to kind of segue into some um, figurative language lessons. This might be for older kids, um, but there are examples of all of these figurative languages, idiom, hyperbole, personification, alliteration, and onomatopoeia in I Love Strawberries. Um, and Shannon kind of did us a favor. She made um, some examples of these. Um, so for example, for hyperbole, which is an exaggeration, um, mom and dad talk for a, a hundred minutes 
and there's a bazillion strawberries. So this is obviously hyperbole, which is an exaggeration. So going through the book and finding those um, can be really fun. And I think that Shannon has this kind of plotted out um, on her website, which is shannonisteaching.com. So you can kind of find this figurative language lesson there. Again, you can kind of do it with any um, book about strawberries. It just works really well with the I Love Strawberries book. The next thing I wanna talk about um, is um, extracting DNA from strawberries, which would be a, a lesson for slightly older kids because they have to be able to follow instructions pretty well. Um, either that or you would have to have some volunteers to help you um, kind of stay with each group while they did this. But the materials are super simple, really, really cold alcohol, strawberry soap, some salt, a filter, these kind of things. And I'm not gonna go step by step and tell you the exact directions for extracting the stra DNA from strawberries. But what I will tell you is that you can extract DNA from like a lot of different kinds of fruit, like bananas, for example, or even blueberries, I think. Um, but strawberries are definitely the easiest. Um, so if you are interested in getting step-by-step -step directions for extracting DNA from strawberries, it is something that you can just Google very easily. And there's actually YouTube videos where people do it step-by-step. -step. Um, but definitely wanted to point this out as an option um, if you're looking for a fun um, science experiment to do. And as you can, if you can see it here, this like white filmy stuff that kind of looks like gross, kind of like spit, it's kind of gross, but that's the DNA. So they can, they can pick it out and they can see it and they kind of um, observe it. It's just kind of a fun thing to do. It's a fun um, science experiment that's not too complicated. So it should be easy enough to do with um, younger kids. Another uh, science lesson that you can do um, using strawberries is to talk about life cycle. And of course you can just have kids go through what is the life cycle of a strawberry and you can kind of go through each section um, but kind of an interesting way to introduce students to the life cycle might be doing it this way instead you could put up a picture like this on your smart board on the wall you know you can post it around so kids can like get up out of their seats and look at it and then let them look at this picture for a few minutes let them observe it ask them what do you notice about this picture? What kind of questions um, does this picture bring up? Do you wonder anything about this picture? What do you think is happening in this picture? And just have kind of students organically come up with um, what they're seeing in this picture. It's just a way to start the conversation that might, might be um, a little bit more interesting to the students because we're putting it on them to be the scientists when they are observing this picture. And then after that picture, you can show them this picture, which um, has different um, stages of the life cycle of strawberries in it. And I can tell you that this really does happen because I, after I read the I Love Strawberry books to my kids, they made me plant strawberries, which actually um, I didn't think was going to be that much work, which I should have known from reading the book. But it was a lot of, it actually is a lot of work to like weed them and keep pests away and, <laughs> and all that. Um, but I can tell you that um, this does happen on strawberry plants where you get some flowers and you get some green strawberries, some bre brand new strawberries, and you can have red strawberries all at once. Um, but you can show this picture again to your students after you show them the first one and before you talk about the life cycle. And um, again, you can kind of ask them what they are observing. It's not as straightforward maybe as the first picture was. So they might have more questions about this one. They might make different observations about this picture. Um, and then after they've um, viewed both pictures and written down their questions and their observations, you can either have them talk with each other or you can bring it to be a group discussion. And then you can discuss the life cycle of a strawberry. And, um, you know, in the, um, educator guide that we have, we have um, like, you know, the stages and you can have them put them in the correct order if you really want to drive that home. But um, I'm, I'm almost, I'm almost afraid to like stop sharing and show you this, but you don't need video for this. And I think it, um, you don't need sound for this. And I think that is a really, really cool um, thing to show after you talk about the life cycle. There's this video on YouTube. It's called Strawberry 40 Days of Growing 
time lapse. And there's actually a couple different time lapse videos for strawberries, but this one is definitely the best one. Um, you don't need the sound for it, like I said. I'm actually going to turn the sound off for it. But this is a really fun one to show the kids after you show them the um, those pictures of, of the different life cycle of the strawberry so they can kind of see uh, you know, how a strawberry plant grows and how it does kind of um, produce fruit. This was made, this, they grew this strawberry from a seed, which I think was um, pretty interesting. Here, we'll kind of fast forward a little bit. And you can see the little, this is the coolest part when it comes, when like that goes from a flower to the actual strawberry. I, I find that part fascinating and I'm an adult and I've seen it before. So the petals fall off. Yeah, this is a super good one. All right, we'll fast forward a bit to the end here. And then see, we've got the, we've got the ripe strawberry there at the end. Um, so yeah, if you're doing um, the strawberry life cycle, definitely think about introducing strawberry life cycle that way. It's just a different way of thinking about it. Show them this time-lapse video so they can see the whole thing. It just makes it more exciting and real than um, just like putting them in the right order or something like that, which we have putting them in the right order in our educator guide. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that, but just something a little bit more fun. Um, so I Love Strawberries is also a book about how strawberries grow, obviously. So it could be a really fun way to introduce a how-to um, you know, unit where you have students write out the steps how to do something. I remember when I did this in kindergarten or whenever I did it, I did it on how to do a peanut butter and jelly, but you can do it about strawberries, either how strawberries grow or um, making a strawberry recipe. Um, and if you decide to do a strawberry recipe, Shannon also has this really cute handout where they can draw a picture of each step, kind of help make that more visual um, for the how-to kind of um, lesson. I don't know if you remember, but in I Love Strawberries, Jolie writes a little poem about how sad she is that she couldn't buy strawberries that day. So another fun thing to introduce after you guys read the book is um, a little um, poetry. And haiku poems are really fun to use with kids because they're short and they're simple. As long as students understand what a syllable is, or it's a good opportunity to explain what a syllable is, um, because haiku poems are um, just three lines each. The first line is five syllables, the second line is seven syllables, and the third line is five syllables. Um, Shannon has written us an example here. It says, sweet, delicious fruit. I could eat them every day, pancakes, pie, or plain. And so not only do um, you could introduce poetry this way, but you could challenge your students like one step farther and have them incorporate their knowledge of strawberries into their haikus. So here's a couple examples of that. Um, grown in every state, they can have 200 seeds, their spring's first fruits. So that just takes facts about strawberries and adds them into a haiku. Or this one's about health, antioxidant, loaded with vitamin C, full of fiber too. So I thought I would just give you a second if you wanted to take your, let's see what time is it? Do we have time for it? Okay. Um, take take one, one minute and see if you can write your own little strawberry haikus. Um, if you put it in the question and answer section, um, I can try to pull it up and, and read your strawberry haiku. So I'll give you, I'll give you two minutes to do that, to write a strawberry haiku, and then we'll keep going. We'll see if anyone's brave enough to share their, their strawberry haiku.
Jada, do you have two more lines of your poem? That's a good first start. That's definitely five syllables. Yep, take time. All right, about 30 more seconds. Does anyone else want to share? You can type it into the question and answer section. I've got that pulled up. Anybody feeling brave and poetic? It's okay if you're not. Jada, you're very close here. Be beautiful red fruit, delicious to eat in school. Very good. Tess is taking a chance. So while they're while they're looking, Julia, I Googled, and if you Google strawberry uh, haiku, there actually are several out there. Oh, so really? You can find them on the Google. My favorite. There you go. Strawberry ice cream runs down the side of its cone. Pink pool of sticky. So sorry. Wow, that's I creative. <laughs> oh, Jada finished it with the last line of "I love strawberries." Wow, who knew that? strawberries that's so perfect that's five syllables thanks so much for sharing people keep being creative and maybe if haikus are not your thing um you can always try um an acrostic poem which is another great way for students to take the information that they learned about strawberries and kind of be creative with it um maybe w might be hard but they'll get watering strawberries need watering okay I just thought of that line for you you're welcome so acrostic poem also available um, to try out this worksheet's also available on shannon's website the um the strawberry book also shows jolie journaling a lot and how fun that can be so another fun thing you can do is just to make one of these um little strawberry journals just to get kids interested in, in journaling a little bit. Um, you can show them how Jolie journaled with the date up at the top um, and that kind of thing. So you could create one of these. Here are other, um, two other um, examples of worksheets that Shannon has totally for free, totally can download them. Um, one of them is a strawberry puzzle sheet where they've got to figure out what numbers um, the berry and the flower and the leaves represent. And the other one is just um, reading a picture graph. So those are um, other math uh, um, concept ones that are totally free online. So I hope all of these kind of gave you some um, ideas, different ways to think about how you could do strawberry lessons in your classroom. Uh, what I love really a lot about um, the Agri Classroom Conference is um, the idea sharing um, piece of it. And while there's no chat feature, um, I did want to give you a minute to, if you had an idea that you came up with during this part of the presentation that you really wanted to share, if you want to put it in the Q&A, we can read it out loud for everybody. But during the um, Ag in the Classroom conference, <laughs> the one teacher had this really fun idea, and it was to challenge her students to think about this question what do strawberries sound like? And they're all like, Wait, strawberries don't sound like anything. And then they go through the scientific you know, process of like making a hypothesis and talking about what strawberries sound like. But, and at the very end, she lets them cut into the strawberries. And she says, it's so silent in the room when they're like cutting into the strawberries and like listening to the strawberries, they're cutting into it. Um, that you could hear a pin drop in her classroom, but what you can really hear is the fizzing sound that strawberries make when you cut into them. They make a little bit of a fizzy, fizzy sound. And so she said that kids really love doing that in her classroom. So that was a really fun idea um, to share. So if you have any ideas, you can type it into the Q&A um, and we can share them out with everybody. But if not, I hope that some of those inspired you to try doing strawberry lessons in your classroom. Um, let's see, I'll go to my next slide here.
If you liked those lessons, if you like the book, you should definitely check out Shannon Anderson. She's very um, active on social media. These are her handles. Um, and that's her website um, where you can find a lot of these lessons. She is a fantastic person. She's also a motivational speaker um, as well. And she comes and does professional development um, for educators as well. So there's lots of opportunities. If you're curious to learn more about Shannon, definitely check out her website. So I thought I would just take the last few minutes to talk about other books from Feeding Minds Press. Kevin talked about Hero for the Hungry at the beginning. Um, that's our only middle grade book right now, um, The Life and Work of Norman Borlaug. And if you don't know who Norman Borlaug is, then you didn't listen to Peggy Thomas earlier. No, I'm just kidding, um, but maybe not. Um, he it won um, the Nobel Peace Prize for saving over a billion billion with a B, people from starvation through using different um, science technologies to create uh, um, wheat varieties that were heat and pest resistant. So his story is one of true American grit. It's one of science. It's one of history. Um, Peggy Thomas is so, so talented. Um, she is very well known for taking these agricultural biographies and making them quite readable <laughs> and, um, and just fun. Um, to learn about. So here for the Hungry, September 1. Um, My Family's Corn Farm is also going to be coming out in September, um, and it follows Presley as, sh as she um, plants, grows, and harvests corn with her family. We also see how corn is, is processed and what it's used for in different products. And the other thing that my, my Family's Corn Farm focuses on is um, different sustainability practices. We talk about cover crops, buffer zones, and then she also has um, the cattle come in and eat the other parts of the corn stalk as well. So if you're looking for a different way to introduce um, some sustainability practices, check out My Family's Corn Farm. It is available in paperback only, um, and you can pre-order it. It will come out in September as well. My Family's Soybean Farm, uh, if you haven't seen that one, it's just like my family's corn farm, except about soybeans. And instead of focusing on sustainability practices, it really focuses on showcasing technology. So um, it shows off GPS and drones and other different kinds of technologies that folks um, are using on farms. That one's also available in paperback and hardcover. Right this very minute, if you haven't seen this book, definitely, definitely check it out. You can watch it on YouTube. I'm 100% certain of it. Um, and it, it's a table to farm book. And what that means is we start with the meal, like breakfast, which is pancakes and orange juice. And it takes you to the field where wheat is grown, where uh, the orange grow, where the oranges are harvested and shows you how maple syrup is harvested as well. So it goes over a lot of different kinds of agriculture. It shows a lot of different types of um, farms, big and small. Um, and there's a ton of diversity in this book as well. So that's an excellent book to start with if you are looking for a good accurate ag book. Burn at Night is a really fun and heartwarming book about a father and a daughter as they care for animals in their barn in the pre-dawn hours of the night. Um, this is a really good way to show maybe students in more urban areas how farmers care for their animals and how um, farming is really a family um, operation. So uh, check that one out. It's got snow on the cover. It does take place in winter, but it is charming no matter when you read it. Hey, Julia, I want to put a plug in for maybe working with their FFA chapters if they're in a rural area. Uh, we did a social media thing and it went over so well where we had kids from around the state here in Illinois show us what happened in their barn at night. You could totally do that at a local level. Or if you've got students or former students or kids in your classroom, show what happens in the barn at night. Typically, we think of uh, petting zoos and lots of vibrancy going on spring, summer, early fall. But what happens in the winter? There's still animal care going on. Just a, I, We've had a lot of people ask about that. So I wanted to put that plug in. Great oh, book, definitely. great plug. Yep. Yeah, definitely. And it's a really great way of, yeah, just showing, you know, farmers caring for animals and um, not a ton of books do that, so it's a great way to do that. Um, the next, uh, the next um, picture shows a couple of different kinds of books. These are our free printable books that deal with careers, um, and they're for older readers. They're like in the 3-5 zone, and those are actually completely free to print and do with whatever you like. Um, so check them out. There's um, one on pumpkins, cows, florists, potatoes, and strawberries. 
And finally, Tales of the Dairy Godmother, Chuck's Ice Cream Wish, is about a little boy named Chuck who wishes for all the ice cream he could ever eat. And so how do you get that? You obviously are granted your own dairy farm. And so he learns all about where ice cream comes from and all the hard work and care that is being put into creating this product for um, us and our families. So if you haven't seen those books, um, definitely check them out. If you're interested in using it in your classroom, you can kind of email me and I'll see if I can send you um, a digital review copy of any of those books as well. Finally, if there's anything that you're looking for that you haven't seen here, if there's a book that you're looking for that you haven't seen here, um, you can search our um, recommended publications and our ag literacy catalog. Under recommended publications, you'll be able to search for books um, by topic and by grade level. Some of them are a bit dated, but they can still be found in libraries. Um, so if you're like, this was great about strawberries, but I hate strawberries, I wanna focus on apples or that's more relevant to me because we teach in the fall. You can go to recommended publications and you can look up different books that we recommend about um, apples. Um, we are very, um, I don't wanna say mean, but I can't think of a different word about books that we select. We're very selective. I should say we're very selective about books that we recommend. Um, so you know that the information is, is going to be um, accurate. There's not going to be stereotypes of farmers. There's not going to be unsafe situations like kids riding tractors or that kind of thing um, in the books that we recommend. So yeah, definitely check out that if that's something you need. And finally, thanks so much for coming. Um, I will talk to Kevin about getting you all the links so I can get you guys those resources that we talked about um, earlier in this. Um, but a lot of them can be found on Shannon Anderson's website. So I think there's a few minutes. If you guys had any questions. Yeah, um, got, a, got one that came in, Julia. She talks about more of a comment, but love the tale of the very godmother. Used it during their fairy tale lesson. Uh, hadn't thought of that, but uh, during that oh, role, uh, that genre, that, that thematic unit, doing fairy tales, a great way to do that. Plus you can make your own ice cream in a bag or a butter jar or whatever, do those kind of things. Great, great comment there. Um, one other thing that Julia does, uh, we talked a little bit about the books, is um, and, uh, a lesson, uh, uh, a workshop that she presented at National talking about uh, aspiring authors. Julia, can you talk about that a little bit? Feeding Minds Press is always, accepting submissions, yes. but let's talk about uh, everybody's got a book inside them. Everybody does. How do we get it out of them and what does it really look like? Sure. So yeah, Feeding Minds Press totally takes what's called unsolicited submissions, which means you don't need a literary agent to send us your manuscript to be reviewed. Um, the manuscripts that we're looking for are for obviously super high quality. It costs a lot and it takes a lot of effort to publish a book. So we only select about three manuscripts out of like 300 every year to publish. Um, and obviously publishing is a very subjective um, industry. Um, so if you submit something and, and we don't publish it, don't be offended. You're with, you're in good company. <laughs> you're in good company. Um, but some things that we're looking for in manuscripts that we do select are high levels of creativity and very well written manuscripts. And you can have those things by joining the Society of Children Book Writers and Illustrators and joining critique groups where you work on um, getting your manuscript exactly where you need it to go. Um, manuscripts should also have something, of course, um, that has to do with agriculture. We accept books that have lots of factual information, um, but we also accept books that just celebrate rural life. One of the new books we have coming out next year, it's called Farm Boots. And while it's not giving specific information about any kind of agricultural product, it's definitely a celebration of rural life. It definitely shows how um, farmers care for animals and their plants. And so something more conceptual like that is also accepted. Um, we're not looking for any talking animals. Animals are our food and not our friends in this particular instance. Um, no stereotypes like, um, you know, wearing overalls or straw hats or, you know, um, anything like that. And no unsafe situations. Again, kids cannot be driving tractors in our books. We don't put our earmuffs on about real life, but in, um, in our books, we can't have any unsafe situations. And finally, I, will, I wanna mention that magic and whimsy are okay. Um, Tales of the Dairy Godmother obviously has magic. We have a fairy godmother in that book, um, but the information about agriculture has to be accurate. 
So, um, and if you read Tales of the Dairy Godmother, you'll see the magic and whimsy in there. Um, but everything about the cows is completely factual. So definitely feel like being creative. We've got another book coming out, P Potatoes for Pirate Pearl. It's about a pirate that ends up on a potato farm, learns that, that potatoes can help cure scurvy because of all the vitamin C in them. Again, see like the magic and whimsy there, but um, the information about potatoes we're gonna learn is factual. So uh, if you have an idea an accurate agriculture. That's what she's looking for, folks. And uh, just as uh, those of you who uh, who grade English papers, you know, and send them back with edits and uh, join that Society of Children's Books, uh, illust writers and illustrators uh, group, a local group. Uh, really, uh, there's there's a story in all, inside all of us and we just need to get it out there. And sometimes we need some help uh, putting it in the right order or taking it further or backing off a little bit. So. Highly That's recommend right. that. And the American Farm Bureau Foundation as a proud partner with, uh, with the National Ag in the Classroom, uh, always looking forward and excited about their next adventures. And I will tell you, I am very excited about Farm Boots. Can't wait for the social media push we're able to do about Farm Boots. So, Oh, how uh, fun is that going to be? Oh, I can't I wait to hear about that. How fun. Show us your boots. That's it. We're going to be all about it. So uh, with that, folks, thank you very much. We appreciate it. And appreciate Julia and the American Farm Bureau Foundation for joining us. Uh, with that, we're going to end this session and we will start again at the top of the hour. It's my hourly reminder that we will send you that certificate. And if you want to jump on and join the secondary one, you got the link. I think everybody's figured that out now. So we are good to go. Julia, you have a great, uh, you have a great rest of the day and a great weekend. Thank we'll you. talk to you soon. Everybody else, thank you very much. And we'll see you in just a little bit. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.